Hi, my name is Tamara Lipsy, and I'm an aquatic biologist with the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy. Today, we're going to demonstrate how to filter a chlorophyll sample using the MICOR Cooperative Lakes Monitoring Program Protocol. To see how to collect a chlorophyll sample, please see our other video on chlorophyll sampling. After a chlorophyll sample is taken, the brown bottle should be kept in a cooler with an ice pack out of direct light. Before you take your bottles out of your cooler, check and make sure you have all of your equipment. A coffee filter or paper towel, a 60 milliliter plastic syringe, flexible plastic tube, filter holder, two membrane filter discs, tweezers and a large safety pin, two sample storage vials and caps, two chlorophyll sample labels, aluminum foil, and a fine tip permanent black marker. The best place to filter a chlorophyll sample is at a sink inside out of direct sunlight. So let's get started. Unscrew and open the filter holder. Using your tweezers, remove the black O-ring and set it to the side. Open the bag of filters and note that there are both white and blue circles in the bag. The blue pieces are the filter separators and should not be used. The white pieces are the actual filters. Using your tweezers, remove a filter without touching them with your fingers. Center the filter on the screen side of the filter holder and place the O-ring on top of the filter. Screw the filter holder back together until it is snug and place it to the side. Grab the syringe and the small piece of clear plastic tubing. Push the tubing onto the syringe. It does not snap in place, but will fit snugly. Set the syringe down and swirl or invert one of the brown bottles with your chlorophyll sample to make sure nothing has settled to the bottom. Next, we need to rinse the syringe with the sample. To do this, use the syringe and tube to draw up enough of the sample to fill the syringe and then empty it into the sink. Immediately use your syringe and tube to collect another sample from the bottle. you will need to reach the 60 milliliter line. With the syringe pointing up, tap it to force air bubbles to the top. Over the sink, push the syringe plunger until the end of the plunger is lined up with the 50 milliliter mark. Remove the plastic tube and attach the filter holder to the syringe. Like the tubing, it does not snap into place, but you can get it to fit snugly. Point it down towards the sink. Slowly push the sample water through the filter holder. The pressure should be such that you see a rapid drip. It should not be a steady stream of water. Pushing too hard may rip the filter, so avoid excessive pressure. As you push the plunger, make sure that no water is leaking out of the side of the filter holder. If you can, you should push the plunger until no water remains. If your sample has a lot of algae or other particles in it, it may become too difficult to push the full 50 milliliters of sample through the filter. In these situations, stop pushing and note how much water you are able to filter on the data sheet. After filtering the water, separate the filter holder from the syringe and unscrew it carefully to view the filter. Make sure the filter looks intact. 
it may look slightly green or brown. This is the algae that chlorophyll will be measured from. Using the tweezers, remove the O-ring. And now, using a safety pin and the tweezers, fold the filter in quarters with the algae on the inside. The filter will stick a bit to the filter holder, and it requires a steady hand and some practice to do this job smoothly. Remember never to touch the filter with your fingers. Put the folded filter into a sample vial and cap it. Place a filled out sample label onto the vial lengthwise. Let's take a look at what a correctly filled out sample label looks like. Please use a fine tipped permanent black marker to fill out the sample labels. You will fill out the late name and ID. In addition, write CA, which stands for chlorophyll, in the parameter code box and write MGCO3, which stands for magnesium carbonate, into the chemicals added. On the label for the second sample, write REP next to the late name. This is short for replicate. You now have one sample completed. Congratulations. Now you get to do it all over again with the second sample bottle. When both samples are complete, Wrap them completely with aluminum foil to keep all light out. This foil wrapping step is critical. Unwrapped samples cannot be accepted for laboratory analysis. Write your lake name and sample month on the foil packet. The samples go into a zip top bag with your lake name, county, and field ID number. Fold the data sheet Place it into a separate zip top bag so it stays dry and place that in the bag with your samples. Storing your data sheet with the samples is a good way to make sure the paperwork never gets lost. Once you're done, store your samples in the freezer. Now rinse all filtering equipment with tap water, no soap, and allow it to air dry. On the designated turn-in date, Deliver your frozen chlorophyll samples and data sheets to the proper turn-in location. To learn more about the MyCore Cooperative Lakes Monitoring Program, visit us at mycore.net.